Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Modern Warfare Weapon Tactics. I'm Wheezy and today we are going to be discussing the R90 shotgun. In this video we're going to cover four main topics, weapon strengths, weapon weaknesses, engagement tactics, and when to disengage. So let's get right into it and start by talking about the weapon strengths of the R90. It has an extremely fast time to kill, which is pretty typical for a shotgun. It kills to in one to two shots at close range. And actually, relative to some of the other shotguns in the game, the R90 is a little weak as far as damage output per shot. However, its fast fire rate and high ammo capacity more than make up for it. It also has really great hip fire, which means that there's not really any need to aim down sights with it. Unlike some other shotguns, aiming down sights doesn't add much range. Um, it adds a little bit, but because of the high fire rate that we talked about, and we'll talk about more in the rest of this video, it's not really that important to aim down sights with the R90. I would, I primarily used it hip fire. I would suggest you primarily focus on hip fire technique with it. Talking a little bit more about the fast time to kill, let's focus on one rule you want to use when using the R90, and that's that you should always fire both shots. The R90 between is a tool barrel shotgun, so you can fire two shots before you have to work the action. Um, so there is a pause between every two shots before you can fire two more shots. Um, this actually reminds me a lot of using like a uh, a Garand in like a World War II game that can fire eight shots before the clip is ejected. You want to kind of use the same sort of logic here with the R90. Fire both of those shots every time, even if the first shot kills them, because you want to have both of those shots available when the next target shows up because one shot isn't always enough to kill the R90 because like I said it's not as powerful as some of the other shotguns. It also has plenty of ammo. It's got 14 rounds to start out with which means that you get seven double barreled shots um, before you even have to reload and considering that firing both shots when you're within a reasonable shotgun range is almost guaranteed to kill whoever you're shooting at, especially when you're hip firing and the wide angle of spread. That means that this shotgun has the potential to very quickly kill up to seven people or more at close range. Um, so it's so it's actually a really excellent weapon if you if you make sure you do this. But you don't want to get caught firing one shot and then saving that second shot and then it wounding somebody and then they kill you while you're cycling the pump. So always fire both shots and um, if you do reload the weapon, uh, it will automatically reset both shots. So if you only fire one and you're in a lull and you reload, it will always reset to have the full two shots available. So you might want to keep that in mind. Um, another thing that's really good about the R90 is that it has good mobility. You can move relatively quickly with it compared to some other weapons in the game, which is important for a shotgun because you're trying to get up close and typically uh, trying to support objectives. Um, and even in a Slayer game mode, versus assault rifles and other longer range weapons, you're gonna have to move pretty quickly to get up close. The R90 is actually quite good for this. So if you keep in mind the double the double shot technique and the high ammo capacity, you can actually engage multiple targets very fluidly. And I, I found it just actually to be extremely enjoyable to use. And I was often surprised running into an objective game mode like in Hardpoint, how easily I could clear out just large groups of people. It, it makes for some uh, really impressive, really impressive clips if you uh, if you really take advantage of the full power of this thing at close range. Now let's talk briefly about the weaknesses of the R90, and I say briefly because there's really two weaknesses. One, it's got limited range. It's a shotgun, so and you're primarily going to be using it from hip fire. So you got to understand that that's a weakness of this weapon. It's not going to be able to to beat people out at long range like a, an AR can but you're really getting a lot of devastating close range damage in exchange for that. The other weakness is the slow reload, which is also not a huge weakness considering the high ammo capacity of a shotgun. It's got, it's got 14 rounds and you can fire them two at a time. So really, you won't often find yourself needing to reload in the middle of an engagement. Like I said earlier, you can kill seven or more people theoretically up close with a, a single uh, single magazine reload. So it's very rarely an issue, but if you do have to stop and reload 14 rounds into that thing, it takes some time. You can use reload canceling and things like that to uh, just top up a few rounds at a time if you got to re-engage, uh, but the reload does take time and it's something to know, but those are really the only two weaknesses of the R90. 
Otherwise, it's an extremely powerful weapon, and I found that you actually will piss off a lot of people when you start using this weapon effect. So now for the core of the video, let's talk about engagement tactics with the R90 shotgun. Um, obviously, so some of these are going to be uh, pretty intuitive. First, we're going to focus on close range engagements. It's a shotgun. We're going to avoid long sight lines. That's part of how we're going to move through the map. You, Because you can't really return fire at medium to long range with a shotgun, uh, you want to make sure that you're avoiding situations where people can shoot at you from medium range. Um, we don't want to waste time trying to engage beyond close range with the R90 unless you have really complete surprise and, and even then you know use your judgment but this is a purpose-built weapon for absolutely unloading on people at close range so we don't want to bother with trying to mess with people at medium to long range and we want to as much as possible minimize our exposure when we're in those long range areas we want to focus on enclosed areas small rooms close corners and objectives places where people will be funneling into that they will appear in your sight line within range of your shotgun. Um, again, with the firing two rounds every time, even if you get someone at kind of what I would call medium short range or longer short range, uh, it may take four shots instead of two to kill people, but you will find that those four shots go off super fast and and it is, it is I keep using the word devastating, but that's the best word for this weapon. Another suggestion I have for, for engagement tactic with the R90 is to use violence of action. This is a common term in the military. Um, essentially what it means is you want to move with purpose and move with force. You want to move quickly to locations where the enemies are. Because of the large ammo capacity and the fast fire rate of the weapon, you're able to engage multiple targets very quickly when you're at close range. So one of the best tactics for the R90 isn't a more conservative play style where you're waiting for people to come to you but because of the amount of firepower you have you want to bust into objectives and start unloading your ammunition it's it's not a technique that i would suggest with a lot of weapons but the R90 will surprise you with how powerful it is and the high mobility again allows you to be more mobile and because you're primarily focusing on hip fire your your visibility stays wide open your movement stays quick you can just move into an area, and as long as you get that habit of firing two shots at a time, bam, bam, and then it cycles the pump, bam, bam, you can move through a room doing that, and you will just absolutely destroy people. Um, and the final tip I have for you is actually a personal preference kind of thing, which is that I would suggest that you run Bouncing Bettys with this a lot. I found this to be surprisingly effective for two main reasons, not just because Bouncing Bettys are... Um, are kind of a douchey leave behind. Uh, in general, claymores and bouncing betties are really irritating to me because you'll most often find people using them to support a camping position. Like they're they're a sniper in a window or a or something like that, or they're in a room and they're leaving claymores and bouncing betties by doors in order to try and keep people from sneaking up on them. That is absolutely not what I'm suggesting here. What I found with the R90 is that you will often stay alive for so long because you're focusing on close range, close range engagements, which you will dominate. And if you're effectively avoiding medium and long sight lines, you will find that you actually will stay alive for a decent amount of time. And I found one of the best uses for the R90 to be supporting objectives. So when you are putting yourself in a position to support an objective at close range, with the amount of damage you can output with this weapon, you'll actually stay alive for a while. So using a bouncing Betty to either cover an entrance that maybe has a longer line of sight that you don't want to stand in with your shotgun, or to leave on like domination, if you want to leave it at like C while you're going to support B, um, I found that bouncing Bettys got me a lot of kills just because of the amount of time I was alive. So I would, I would only really, well, my, my integrity tells me that you should really only use Bouncing Bettys if you're going to be using them in a way that supports the game mode and supports the objective. And and with the R90, it was the most effective I found Bouncing Bettys to, to actually help support objectives, to just maximize what I was able to accomplish. It's, it's kind of hard to quantify. You'll see it in, in the, some of these clips, um, how, how you can just kind of get random kills from objectives across the map. Um, I found it a lot in Domination, where, or even supporting a hard point objective. You leave a Bouncing Betty by one door, and then you cover the other door with a shotgun, and you're just absolutely going to lock things down. Um, and the, other, the last tip I'll give you about the Bouncing Bettys with the shotgun, because you will probably be leaving them close to high traffic areas, at least that's the intent, if you die, 
Watch the entire kill cam. Wait to respawn, and here's why. If you respawn immediately, as mo most people tend to do, they just want to get right back into the action, as soon as you respawn, your bouncing Betty from your last life will despawn and disappear from the map. While you watch the kill cam, which could last up to five seconds, somewhere in that ballpark, a significant amount of time, if you wait till the end of the kill cam and let the game force respawn you, then you will find that you will actually get kills with your bouncing Bettys after you're dead on a quasi-regular uh, basis. At least I did, so. So especially if you've laid a Bouncing Betty uh, near where you are when you die, wait to respawn and you will probably be surprised. Okay, so let's talk about when you should disengage with the R90. This is gonna be pretty quick and to the point. First, if you start taking damage at medium range, let's say you did get surprise on someone and you decided to go for a longer range kill with the R90, if they start to turn around and get damage on you, or you're in an exposed position where there was a longer line of sight than you saw, if you start taking damage at all, disengage. Go and find cover. You do not want to get into anything other than short short range engagements with the R90. You just don't. Um, and just real briefly, we'll talk about this more in the loadouts video. I wouldn't suggest running this with overkill much either, um, just because the weapon's so powerful for what it does anyway. So. So basically we're going to try and stick with close range, period. If you take damage at medium range, disengage. Relocate or try to bait them in. Sometimes when people are damaging at medium range and they see you take cover, they'll try to move in for the kill to finish you off. That is a great advantage for the R90 because if they chase you around a corner, they are going to get a face full of murder. Um, if you see an enemy at long range, disengage. This isn't even about taking damage. If you are holding the R90 in your hands, and you see someone at long range, go get behind cover. You don't even you don't even want to give them a chance to try and shoot at you. You want them to wonder if they saw something on the horizon. Just just don't even bother. Um, and the last thing that I'll talk about with disengagement is at close range, never disengage. Now, never is a pretty strong word. I'm you know, you can use your own judgment as things uh, you know as you as you get more experience with the R90. But this thing puts out so much damage so quickly. I can't imagine a close range fight that you'll be in where it would ever be an advantage for you to disengage. You're better off trying to let the shotgun cycle and getting two more shots off. Just go down blasting. There is there is no point to run away at close range with this beast. So those are the only times I suggest disengaging and at close range just do not do it. So let's go over a quick summary of what we just learned about the R90 shotgun. It's devastating at close range. Absolutely devastating. Have I mentioned that word before? This weapon is devastating. <laughs> Always fire both barrels. It is great for objective defense at close range. Don't bother with long range enemies and get close and fire away. The R90 is a weapon, one of the first shotguns I decided to start using and was a little discouraged with it because it's again you it's a bit of a restrained playstyle to not be able to have medium to long range engagements but once i started getting used to how to move around the map so that i was primarily getting close range engagements this weapon was a pun intended a blast to use it's a uh, I, I got quite a bit of hate for the amount of of slaughter i was able to do with this shotgun and to be honest i'm a little surprised i don't see it more often um it it is just did I say devastating? It is devastating. Go try it out for yourself. Um, I'll be putting up a loadouts video to go along with this. Um, check that out to put together a big build and, uh, and go enjoy yourself some blasting good times. Thanks for watching this uh, R90 shotgun weapon tactics video and I'll see you guys later.